everybody, it's Renee from Tailspin Farm and I am jumping on today. I had talked about having another um, product that I wanted to show and I've had this actually for years um, and now that I'm getting my YouTube channel up and running I wanted to show you some of the tools that I have and use. Um, this is, and we're on the flip side of my little area I have here, and I'm sorry you can hear the washing machine and dryer in the background. I kind of share my space down here in the basement with my laundry room, but it works. So um, this is my creation side of the room. As you can see, I tend to be a creative mess, but this is where my stuff is and I know where it's at sometimes. And um, this is how I work best. So this is where I have all my, my jewelry stuff and lots and lots of stuff. <laughs> so. Um, but I wanted to use this table and I wanted to show you in a minute here I'll zoom up but this is the Addy um, Express knitting machine it's the king size one I did have the smaller version I can't think of what that one is called um, but I will try to link them both below on Amazon and um, this um, the smaller one is I don't know maybe that big of brown and I just wasn't using them enough at one point and I, I sold it and I wish I wouldn't have sold it because now I am using them more. Um, but I wanted to talk about these machines a little bit because I am a hand spinner and I raise and grow rabbits. So just those two pieces alone take up a ton of time for me to, and I love to knit and crochet um, and spin. And so to get the fiber off the rabbits, to groom them weekly, and to spin yarn and then to create product takes a lot of time and for me this um, machine cuts down some of that time for me to create things um, I am slowly filling up my shop um, my website is up and running now um, it is www.tailspinfarm.com and you can go on there and shop there's a few things on there right now I hope to be adding more here in the next week or two um, but for me to get products out and going, sometimes I need a little help. And so that's where this machine comes in handy. I can knit, um, you can actually knit a lot on this. I have basically stuck with hats on this. Um, it's a great um, hat maker, but they have books. Um, if I think of it, I'll try to pop that in below also. They have some books on how to do different, you can do sweaters with this, you can do shawls, it's essentially you piece things together. This has a, there's a switch over here, before I lock this in, um, there's a switch that either does circular or straight knitting. And then um, there's also a stitch counter right here. And so you can do quite a few things with this. Um, today I want to show you, I'm going to get this going and then I'll probably either cut out and come back after I've finished the project. It will take me a little bit, probably about an hour or so to completely finish a hat on here, but it still is completed and for me using my hand spun yarn that I have spent hours on sometimes, whether it be for my rabbits or whatever, um, I do have alpaca and pygora from when we raised alpacas and pygoras. Um, so I am still spinning a bunch of that that I had stowed away after we moved here. And so I have spent hours with this fiber, either dyeing it, spinning it, grooming it off the animal. And so there's a lot of time already just into the skein of yarn. Um, this is actually, this was a boughten one, uh, a boughten um, fiber that I got. And then I spun this um, during a spin along in, at Christmas time. And color is going to be hard to pick up in this lighting, but it's a lavender and pink, and um, I bought a bunch of these. So I'm going to make some hats with some of my hand spun. I have been doing, I did um, the Crafty Housewife 12 Day of Christmas spin along, um, it, and that's in a group with Crafty Housewife Yarns. If you haven't checked them out, you'll want to. Erin does that, and she's also just taken over um, the local wool site. If you go to mylocalwool.com, you will see that is a great resource for finding um, fiber. 
and I think they have yarn on there too. I have to get on and check it out a little bit more. I signed up for it last fall and then it shifted over to air in just the last month or so. Um, and so you can find fiber um, farm raised, you know, where people are handling these animals like I do with our rabbits, um, caring for these animals and then taking their fiber off and so spinning it. So I have hours into this and I have probably between the 12 days of Christmas spin along and this month I'm doing spin her free which is through spin illusion um, and that is for um, there it's a for human trafficking they are um, collecting money for that right now to stop human trafficking and so that on um, spin along I probably have another 10 or 12 skeins so I probably have 25 skeins just in the last couple months of hand spun yarn and they're all fun colors, fun textures. So I'm gonna take some of these and turn them into hats. Um, because a lot of the stuff I did for the 12 days of Christmas is a lot of random. It was different, each day we had a different assignment to do. And so I just have a bunch of yarn that I want to spit, um, get into something. And so this is a perfect way to do that. Um, the pom-poms I ordered off Etsy and I will link her site below. They are really beautiful pom-poms. Um, and I'm trying to remember, I can't remember her name, but I will link it below, a link to her site. Um, and so these are really fun. I bought a bunch of colors and I'm gonna put these with some of my hats and then list them on my site. So to this, um, this can whip up uh, a hat, like I said, probably in about an hour. There are a couple different ways to finish off the hat, um, and I'll show you what I typically do. Um, it comes with two of these, and they just um, fit here. Gotta turn them down a little bit. They fit here on the legs, and so you can attach it to your table. Um, tighten it down so that it's not moving. And again, there's two of them for the front. Let me see if I can shift this to show you what I'm doing. I'm just tightening this in here. And this comes with a tool. It does come with extra needles here in case you break them. I haven't had any problems with that. The only issues I have had with this, reset that. Um, I have every now and then it'll skip a stitch. I've watched a couple other videos that people have had on these. Um, just showing a demonstration of how they work and they seem to be able to just turn it turn it turn it and never have issues I sometimes and I'm not sure if it's the yarn maybe I'm using with the homespun it gets caught or whatever but I do pay close attention so I don't drop a stitch um, I am not a fabulous knitter I I love crochet more than I do knitting and I'm better at it um, and so a drop stitch for me is, is something that I am not still certain um, what to do with it. And so um, I am more comfortable just keeping an eye so that there isn't a drop stitch here. And I'm going to untangle this. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off real quick and I'm going to put this skein into a ball real fast so that I don't have any issues because um, I will have issues with it twisting up and getting knotted. So let me put this onto a ball and I'll be right back. Okay, I am back and I put it into a cake. Um, and I was trying to remember as I was doing that what this yarn assignment was, and I think it was thick and thin, um, or a bulky weight. So this is pretty heavy yarn, and I'm hoping there's enough here to make a hat, a full hat. If not, I'll show you um, afterwards if I had to add in. Typically what I'll do is if I don't have quite enough, I'll add in some Angora. So a few rounds of Angora, um, like a gray or a white. I may put a stripe in this one, so we'll see how far I get, but I'll just let you know at the end of the video what I ended up doing. Um, also, I will put this at the bottom too. This is my ball winder. These come from Amazon. Um, this is an awesome tool to have and a necessary tool. Um, so I'm going to try and get a good angle here. Oops, sorry, 
sorry about that. Of how these work. Okay. I had to shut you off there for a second. Um, I'm just going to take it, and there are, oops, there are three, right here, there are three black hooks. Um, and essentially to get your started, what you're going to do is go under the first one and you are going to go around every other one. So it's just a back and forth. This is what uh, threads it onto the machine essentially. Um, and I have made this part both top and bottom for my hat. It just depends on what you're going to end up doing at the end. There are a few, way, few different ways to finish these hats off. And um, once I get through this and um, get the hat done, I'll kind of show you the three different ways of how to do that. Okay, so I've come back around to my black, first black one, and I'm going to advance it ahead just a little bit. I'm going to slide out. There's a, um, a guard here that you just slip your yarn into, and essentially that is it you are just going to go around and around and again I watch on this side here I'm going to watch to make sure that I don't have any drop stitches so I am not going to go particularly quickly with this um, this is a good speed to be able to keep an eye on and if I can catch it I I will watch for it that's the only complaint I have about this and again, I think this yarn is going to be, typically I do my Angora on these to make my Angora hats on this one. Um, and I think it's probably the yarn that ends up getting caught. This one's a pretty thick yarn. And so I think that's going to make a difference with how quickly this is going to go together. I don't think I'm going to have any problems with this um, catching or dropping a stitch. Now with it being so thick, I'm going to want to make sure that it goes through each hook. Um, there are some pretty thick pieces here. Um, and so as I do this, this first one here, and I can see that I've got quite a thick piece here caught. And so I'm going to just do that. And this also came with a tool. I don't, ha I don't know where it is. Um, it came with a double ended tool. I'm just using, I think this is a a loom hook you just need something in case you need to fix anything or when you're getting ready to take this off you'll use this also if you need to lift up anything as you're as you're taking it off off the hooks so I am essentially just going to turn the handle and um, go around and around and around oh and I just see I'm gonna back up a little bit because one of mine I'm gonna use my little tool and I kind of have the camera on the wrong side. I am just going to make sure I had one that kind of didn't catch. So that's all I do is just keep an eye on it. Um, some of these thicker parts are getting caught up. And you just go slowly um, and watch and you shouldn't have any problems. And again, your yarn, um, how much, how, the thickness of the yarn and, and what kind of yarn you're using will make a difference. Um, so I'm gonna finish this out and then I will pop back on at the end and show you um, what this looks like to take it off and how I finish it. Okay, I am back. Um, and this took me under an hour. Um, and I did have to add Angora into this one. Um, I knew I wasn't gonna have enough of my other um, purple merino. So what I did was put 10 rows twice um, with the purple. And I will do a longer video next time, the whole process of how you put it on doing it and then how you take it off. Essentially all you do is use a darning needle and pull off as you go around. Um, you just pull off the stitches and that's what essentially I'm just going to make the top with right now. Um, I'm going to pull this and that will close up where I was 
um, knitting. There are, I think, three different ways that I have done um, finishing on these. Um, this is one way, and what I'm going to do with this one, and this is this uh, lavender is a pretty bulky, bulky yarn, so um, I want to make sure I get it nice and tight there at the top, and. Um, I am going to, when I get done here, I will stitch the top closed um, and I have my pom-pom that I will sew in when I do that. So the one way, this is the one way to do it is to, um, and it's going to look just like that and then I will um, fix it. I am going to keep this one with just a rolled brim. I'm going to finish off. This is essentially where we put it on the machine. I'm going to finish this off, dish, um, stitch it off right there, and clean it up. And this will be like a beanie type with a rolled brim. Um, the other way you can do it, um, there are two different ways. You can take it off from the top like I did with a circular hook. So when you finish, you put your circular hook on to take it off the needles, and then you can cast on, you've, you've got the hat cast on, you can do like a two by two ribbing around to finish it off. Um, the other way to do it is to um, to get started and then get a good bit of, of going around and around and around about, oh, I don't know, three or four inches. And you can come back and lift up each stitch and that will give you a rolled brim, um, a double brim. Um, so those are the three ways that I know how to do the hat on here. Um, but today I'm just using the brim here. It's just going to be a rolled brim and I'll finish that off and then this is done. So this took me under an hour um, for a handmade hat. And I didn't mention this is a 46 needle and I think the smaller one is a 22 needle um, machine around. And so I will link um, both machines. Amazon has them or they did have them separately and they also have a you can get them together in a full pack. It comes with um, the books and everything. So I will link all that below. But that is essentially how to make a little bit, to put a little bit of ease into some of your handmade stuff when you're really focusing on, and I need to block this just a little bit, um, when you're really focusing on other things, um, you can get some projects made and done a little bit quicker by using tools like this. So I hope this video helped and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a fabulous rest of your Monday. Talk to you soon.